Hi guys, this is Lisa and Miranda. We're back with Faith Fitness. We're excited that you're here and joining us this morning for some worship and just having the word wash over us and praise. We're just excited to have this designated time each week with you. So we're just going to start with either no or little resistance. You can interlace your fingers if that feels nice. Hmm, open up your chest. We'll get the playlist started here in a minute. Mm. Lord, we just come before you this morning. We just thank you. We thank you for your promise that you are always with us. I will always be with you to the very ends of the ages. So, Father, I just pray today, whatever anyone's going through, that we just remember that truth this morning, Lord. I am with you always to the very ends of the ages. Jesus himself in us, Christ in us. We thank you for this time. I pray a blessing over anyone listening, any ear that hears any word this morning, Lord. Do what you do. Water that seed. Draw them into yourself, Father. We pray that. We know that that can only be done by you, by your Holy Spirit but by you, Father, drawing them. So, Lord, we give you this time. We ask that you come and fill this place. Be our, our words that come out of our mouths, Lord. And we just praise you. Amen. Just warming up for a song here a little resistance on. Make sure your shoulders are down.
Okay, so I'm going to start with some verses. Do we want to give any instruction for this song while I read? You got two songs, I believe, that are a little faster. Okay. So turn the resistance a little. Yeah, turn the resistance whether you're seated or you can stand. So cover back. Okay. So I was thinking of something in the New Testament, but something God put on my heart was to start with the old. Because everything that Jesus did was prophesied. Everything was foretold in some manner or another. So we're going to start with Isaiah 49, verse 6. The Lord says, It is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob, to bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. So the word was light this morning. Right now, as Lisa, as Lisa prayed, it was, it was light. So then in John 1, chapter 1, it says in verse 4, in Jesus it's referring to, in him was the life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He goes on to say in verse 9, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, so that's fulfilling that Isaiah 49. He came to his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all, which would be the Gentiles, who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent nor human decision or a husband's will, but of the Lord. So the challenge that I'm feeling from the Lord for you right now and me right now if we are children of the light as the word says that we live as children of the light in John because in John 3 19 it says this is the verdict the light has come into the world but people love darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. This is why we don't have fear even when we have sin because we come to the light. The Lord calls us to the light, expose it in the light. And then the last verse I felt led to read right now is Romans 13 starting in verse 11 it, and it says and do this understand the present time like this is the command he's saying understand the time you're in the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed the night is nearly over the day is almost here so let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality or debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Jesus, I thank you that you are the light. You are the only light. You are the light of the world, Jesus. And you command us to be a light of the world. You command us to be a light like a city on a hill. You said, don't hide your light under the bushel. No. Remember the whole song we sang as kids? This little light of mine? Lord Jesus, I pray that each and every one of us would armor ourselves with the light 
armor ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. Not fake light, not pretend light from the world that the world has to offer. No, Lord, the true light, the true light that shines, which is Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray your light shine in every heart today. Lord, draw us near. Let us truly be the light. God, while the world is hateful and angry and scared, let us boast with joy in the light of Jesus Christ. Let us be the true joy of, of Christ. The fake joy that the world offers. A lot of people are going to say joy right now for Christmas, but they don't understand the real joy comes the fruit of the Spirit. It's from the Spirit. It's a gift. So Jesus, let your light shine in our hearts, Lord, to this dark world, that they may be drawn to the light of Christ that is in us. Lord, I pray that over every ear listening, that they'd be encouraged today to let their light shine, just like a little kid, Lord. I even hope that that old song, This Little Light of Mine, echoes in their memory of when they were a kid. Lord, if they ever heard that song as a child, that the light of Jesus would shine in our hearts today, Lord, and others would see, and it wouldn't be about us, but they would see Christ. Christ. This is the time that Christ needs to be seen in our lives. Not even our opinions or our own passions, but the light of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the truth that is in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But a steady push here. We turn the resistance a little. have a chance to eat, Jesus said to the disciples, the apostles, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. 
but many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said. It's already very late. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But Jesus answered, you give them something to eat. Mm. I just love that in verse 33. I hadn't seen it before. Many who saw them leaving recognized them. They ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. Jesus and the apostles, they went by boat, but many who saw them leaving recognized them, recognized Jesus, recognized them, and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. And the disciples say, send the people away so they can go to the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, Mark 6, 37, you give them something to eat. They just found out that John the Baptist had been killed. And he began to teach them. You give them something to eat. What can you give? What can you offer today to someone who might not seem like much? But in the hands of the Lord, he multiplies.
1 Peter 3, 14. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Just feel like during these times, what do we have to give? What do we have to give? So I pray today, I pray today, Lord, help us always be prepared to give an answer for the hope that we have. Yeah. Who Jesus is, yeah. who Jesus is, the name of Jesus, the, the compassionate shepherd, the good shepherd. In Matthew 5, I referred to this, 14 through 16, Jesus said, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You know, Jesus had said, I am the light of the world. And now he says, you are the light of the world. Is it because of us? No, it's because the light of Christ is in us. Colossians says, you are now a people of a kingdom of light. It says, now you're, you're, you're people that belong to the kingdom of light. He rescues us from the dominion of darkness and brings us to the to the light of his son. So this is why we can be ready for a word to answer or to serve. Because I love that last part. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good deeds and then not give glory to you, not give glory to me. No, no, no. They glorify the Father in heaven. So why don't you invite Jesus to do that. Why don't you say, Lord, today, let me do that so that you get glorified, that people may see the light and the good deeds, and you may be glorified. Even that passage in John that I read, I felt like the Lord wants me to go back. Of course, you know, John 3.16, even like, be prepared to give an answer. Everybody knows that one, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, for that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. And that's when he goes on to say, I'm going to read it again. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love the darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that they may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. And I was reading in 2 Kings this week, and I'm telling you, it can be confusing. You've got the kings of Israel, you've got the kings of Judah, one of them's dying, and then the son takes over, but then they decide to go back and tell another story, and it's like, wait, you just said he died in the chapter before, oh, but this happened when he was still alive? Right, I get it, it can be confusing. But the Lord showed me something. In 2 Kings this week, it was in 14, talking about, I don't know how to say it, Amaziah was the king of Judah. 
He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, but not as his, not as his father David had done. In everything, he followed the example of his father Joash. The high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burnt incense there. And just a quick history lesson. High places equal bad. <laughs> high places equal a place of idolatry. It, uh, the mimicking of worship. The mimicking of worship. The people were commanded to worship the God, God only. And something the Lord showed my heart that there about David. You know, David's encouraging because the Lord says, he testifies and acts and he says, and he's the apple of my eye. You know, he, the Lord loved David. Well, David murdered. He was an adulterer. He was a pretty crappy dad. He didn't deal with his kids. One of his daughters got raped by one of his sons. He did nothing. He didn't sit at the gate for a while. His son tried to go against him and bring rebellion to the whole seat, the whole kingdom because David was apathetic. He struggled. But something the Lord showed me was that one of the reasons the why he loved David was because David sinned, but he always ran to God. He always ran to God because it's not, it, David knew even then, he knew that the forgiveness of God, he knew the salvation and the hope relied in God alone. And so if he came to the light, he would let the Lord expose his sins. So even right now, I just want to encourage you, like if you're feeling something or there's a shame or there's some sin, like rejoice in the Lord and say, yes, Lord, I'm going to bring it to the light. I'm going to bring it to the light because it's only the light of Christ that shows that and doesn't make us shrink back from, from his grace. Because 1 John 1, 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And David lived forgiven. He struggled. He sinned. He was not perfection. But he did not run to other gods. He did not run to idolatry. So it's, let, let that transform your heart. Like if the enemy says, you can't be light, well then armor yourself with the light. Ask the Lord, help me, Lord. Help me put off these works of the flesh. Let me walk in the light as you are in the light, Jesus. And even in our vulnerability, we can be that light to others. That might be our word, giving a word, our testimony. Even John said, I must decrease, but he must increase. So what if your boast is, yeah, I'm terrible, but God, but God, he saved me. There's hope for you too. Thank you, Jesus.
joining us today and we hope that you are encouraged and um, (sighs) that the words wash over you and just give you strength and hope and really like I guess I just pray like this feels like a wind of fresh air of the Holy Spirit that's no striving that's no striving that's a yielding Jesus said that he said the condemning was to not look to him and believe like just look to him and so you just look. That's it. It's our faith. It's our hope. So thank you, Jesus. And we just pray a blessing over you all. And we thank you for joining us. Make sure you subscribe and share. Give us any feedback of how you're doing. And we will keep praying for you. And we love you guys. All right. Bye.